What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome to video number three in our 2024 Spring Buyer's Guide series. Today we're talking everything strolling. Today we are covering one of the hottest trends in bass fishing. Now this concept is not new. It's been around for a long time, but there's a huge resurgence over the last two years uh, with forward facing sonar, with tournament winds, it has exploded. There are all sorts of new baits, hooks, products to make it easier. But this concept, mid strolling, bottom strolling, hover strolling, hover rigging, the Damiki rig, moping, moping, <laughs> I'm sure there's 14 other names that we haven't even picked up on yet. The concept of taking a soft plastic on a jig head or on a hook with a little weight and then working that bait either mid column or near bottom to get fish to react is exploding. Tournament fishing, I would say currently the vast majority of tournaments around the country are either being won this way or a major portion of their fish catches are coming this way. But this is not hinging on forward facing sonar. You don't have to have a bass boat with 30 grand worth of electronics to be able to do this. You can do it from shore. You can do it with 2D sonar. This technique took off the Damiki rig. You wanna talk about how this began? Or you want me to? Go for it, you're on a roll. I am on a roll, I feel good today. <laughs> The Damiki rig is really where this became midstream, and that happened long before forward facing sonar was a twinkle in anybody's eye. The concept was 2D sonar, regular sonar on a bass boat, where you could just see straight down under the boat. You can see fish under your boat. The concept with the Damiki rig is that you could take that, drop it down, keep it above those fish, give it a little bit of action, let it sit. A little bit of action, let it sit. And those fish would rise like a crappie, rise up and eat that thing. And it worked remarkably in cooler water months. Now you can also take that same concept, tight line it down steep banks, right? It, this thing was developing before forward facing sonar gave a gave tournaments a shot in the arm and this thing just erupted. But now it is such a major player, it can't be ignored and it deserves its own buyer's guide series going into spring. Yeah, this technique's been around for a long time. I don't care what you call it, you know, Damiki rigging, anytime, you know, everybody refers to the Cinco as the stick bait category, right? Or the Kitek. And anytime you can put your name on an entire category, it's pretty cool. The Dabiki rig's been around for a long time. And we've all heard the term video game fishing, right? right? I mean, going back to old school days with your 2D graph, just video game fishing above those fish, that Dabiki rig was how we were doing it. That and a spoon. But yeah, so there's a lot of different techniques. There's a lot of different baits. You can see the, the explosion of baits throughout this category all these different brands are coming out with with uh you know moping or mid strolling baits or you know straight tail baits or you know scope shad all that sort of stuff there's some really cool baits that have really different um actions so in today's video we're going to talk about kind of hover strolling briefly mid strolling and just some of our favorite baits and why so I guess I'll kick it off with hover strolling. For me, this is a this is a the ultra finesse version of that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like nail weights down to 196 or 192nd. I think this this range roller uh, 196. 196. This is a 132nd. Uh, we're talking about ultra light heads, and for me, this technique is a little bit different. Now it can be the same tight lining shaking if you want, lighter heads, you're keeping that bait higher up in the water column. But but for me, it, it really put big fish in the boat on light line when you could get that death spiral full. And I did a whole in-depth video on this a few months ago, but to keep it short, if you can get that weight forward head in that bait, 
and get it rigged properly when you cast this bait out and you let it fall on slack line it'll do the death spiral okay it's it's mimics a dying bait fish so if you are around deep docks or if you're around standing timber in deep water you throw this thing out there and you let that thing fall on slack line sometimes you're not getting bit until you're in that 15 20 25 30 foot depth but those fish eat it so hover strolling uh basically you're taking there's basically two ways to rig a hover strolling uh bait but catch your breath for just a second yep i want to add one thing here as we're going into this because a lot of guys hear the whole strolling thing they watch tournaments they see guys backs and the guys are looking down they do not care they're like that doesn't apply to me i don't fish like that i don't have live i don't have a bass boat this portion of this really all of it but this portion of this in particular you need none of that you can do it from shore you can do it in shallow water you can do it in deep water pay attention to this portion of it regardless of where you fish yeah and and thank you for that and honestly i have caught more fish visibly looking at them than looking at my screen we were catching giants on this technique before forward facing like you said was even a thing we're talking spring bass fishing right these fish are moving up shallow. How many times have you been on the lake and you look at a certain dock or a certain lay down, you're like, holy cow. Yeah, you see that light coming behind the dock and Dude, there she is floating. You And not just she, maybe multiple she's, right? There's like 40 pounds suspended underneath that dock. That's where this came to play for us. Yep. Ultralight line, four, five, six pound test, throwing that bait out there. I'm not looking at my screen. I'm looking at that fish. Mm -hmm. I'm watching that bait slowly spiral down, and then I'm watching that fish. She just goes slowly. out of sight. <laughs> you're like, oh boy, here it comes, here it comes. And you feel the slightest doop. Now the war's on. Now you're fighting her on four, five, six pound test. So that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about yet. We're not, it doesn't have to be, like Matt that. said, $30,000 worth of electronics on the bow of your boat. We're talking about visibly sight fishing. We're not bed fishing or even fishing a target. Like I said, that lay down or that standing timber. So how to rig it. Basically the gist is putting light weight in the head, a little bit behind the head of the bait to get that thing to kind of nose down and do that spiral. So the two ways to do it, a 90 degree jig hook, right? 90 degree jig hook. And then you take your favorite nail weight and put it in the head of the bait or there's been some companies now that have come out with weight forward heads okay this yeah. is that range roller Matt's gonna really talk about that here in the in the mid strolling because that thing is awesome but it also here it is rigged in that uh, that scope shad you literally have I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out it's so you pop can it see out it. there basically a little bit of weight 30 seconds of an ounce right enough to be able to cast it and get that thing just enough off centered so it does that dive and then death spiral but basically you take your favorite hook and you rig about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch behind the head of the bait okay and then you just rig it like a normal bait and then pull that head in okay so now you have your line tie you got your hook did a little bit big so you guys can see that and then you tie on and put your favorite uh, nail weight I like that range like I said it's a tungsten sinker it stays in the bait and you can get them in ultra light weights or you can take that you know here's a gambler again weight forward hook you rig it the same but the key is getting that bait to do that death spiral and where that really shines for us was that robo worm sculpt and it has a yeah. long dorsal fin a long the entire back of the bait. So if you rig it properly, you can get this bait twisted just enough and you can adjust how wide of a death spiral the bait has. So that scope, and it was discontinued for a long time and we, we were, were stoked we, when it came back. We were bummed, but it came back and we're stoked. So that scoping is an awesome, I can't tell you how many big fish Dude. I've gotten to eat. I mean, uh, granted, once I you can't tell you how many giants I've broke off. I was going to say four pound line with that once, setup, but it's almost it's so finessey and it's it's such a presentation they haven't seen a lot of. They literally, if they don't if they don't eat it on that initial fall, 
you're watching them and you just pop the rod one time and they just suck it in. You set the hook, now you're fighting a seven, eight, ten pound Now you're like, mouth, in there's grass. 40 dock pilings <laughs> and you're like, please come my yeah, way. Yeah, come my way, right? <laughs> but you're still converting the bite. Absolutely. Um, so that sculpin is an awesome bait. Like Just like I said, with that long dorsal fin, you can do some really cool things with it. One of my other favorites is the four inch Senko. That has some body mass to it, it has some weight. You can fish it in deeper water, you can cast it a lot farther. A lot of times these fish, as they're first coming up to the shallows, they're really finicky. They're really kind of skittish, so you can make a lot longer cast. But that four inch Senko, specifically in baby bass and natural shad, those are my two go-to colors um, on that guy. And then obviously the Damiki rig, that's that that's that armor shad. That's a cool little bait to get that thing to, to do that spiral. But uh, we'll link these baits down below. We'll, li we'll link these heads down below, but some kind of lightweight, uh, ultra lightweight, weight forward head in these baits is what's key about the ho hover strolling for me. Again, you can do that thing and sit there and and, and shake that bait. But when you're throwing a 196 ounce, I mean, it's, 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 pac it's a patience game. It's super slow, uh, but getting that thing to do that death spiral on that semi slack line uh, around those key pieces of cover this time of the year is where you're gonna find the best success. Uh, the hover strolling thing is a really, it's not new. We've been doing it for, for many years. We've been doing it over in Japan for many years. It's just a cool technique to um, to convert those, those visible fish that you're seeing. Yeah. All right, let's shift into strolling. The core of what is happening right now. The thing that is exploding. Uh, and this is something that you need to take note of. This can absolutely be done in conjunction with live sonar. Uh, you can spot a fish, you can lead the fish, you can work over the top of them, and you can convert some of those fish. Uh, but you can also do it without any of that. I have caught just as many blind fishing, just casting, as I have studying electronics. It's an amazing, right? It's, it, I, I, I still don't get it. Like I have fished so many areas with a traditional 2.8 Kitek, right? Chucking and winding, I'm like, there's They've gotta fish be here. here. Cast out there, doop. I'm like, why does this work? <laughs> yes. I, I have a theory uh, and, and I covered this. I also shot an in-depth video. That's how important this subject is. We've done multiple videos about it already because it is taking over at least the competitive end of bass fishing right now. Uh, I have a theory, and that is that bait fish in general have a pretty tight action to them, right? The Kitek, there's no question, has taken over swim bait fishing. Uh, that is the staple. The Kitek has a much more aggressive kick than an actual bait fish has. Uh, and a lot of other swim baits have a very aggressive kick. That didn't matter, and in a lot of situations still doesn't matter. But when fish are getting pressured, they're getting beat on over and over and over and over. I think that they're leaning away from those aggressive actions. They're just staying away from them. Because it's more aggressive than the actual real prey. Other end of the spectrum, you've got this strolling thing. None of that aggressive kick at all. So the concept here is we're taking a soft plastic and instead of having a paddle tail kicking behind our bait, we have a straight tailed bait that has very little movement as it comes through the water. But by shaking, we're getting the bait to rock. So instead of tail kick, we now have body roll, twist. And that fish have not seen they are not dialed into yet, and buddy, they are eating it up. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm amazed when a trend fires off, because like we did this stuff forever. When this happened, we're like, how do we miss that, right? Like how, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> Boom, there's another one. It's just amazing. So there's a handful of baits that have stood out for us. There's a handful of heads that have stood out for us and have stood out for the market. Uh, and we're gonna walk you through those very quickly. And then we've also got the rods that we have confidence in. The exact rods we're throwing as well as a budget rod for you. Uh, 
Back to the baits themselves. You can do this with larger baits and smaller baits. Uh, that has to do with time of year and the size of bait fish in your lake. We'll start with the smaller stuff, then we'll talk the bigger stuff. Uh, let's kick it off right here. The spunk shad. 3.5 spunk shad, 4.5 spunk shad, but particularly the 3.5, this is the bait that we had the most success on. Paired up to a dirty jigs guppy head. Here's the exact one. If I could only have one, it's a quarter ounce guppy head with a three aught hook. And again, we will link everything in the video description for you. This is a buyer's guide. This is to help you get the right things if this is something you want to do. It's easy to gamble. It's easy to buy all this stuff, spend hundreds of dollars and miss. We've already done that. So we're trying to help you out here. We found the rods that work the best for us. We found the hooks and the weights that work the best. Certain baits for different situations. So in the video description, we'll link all of it for you. The stuff Tim talked about first, this is going in the order we talk about it. We'll give you the exact heads, the exact baits for every single one. We'll give you favorite colors as well for those baits, just so that you can fish with confidence, knowing that you're at least in a similar situation with the exact same bait, same color, same setup that we would use in that situation. And then you can adapt from there. So again, that 3.5 spunk shad uh, is just a unique bait. It is a round bodied bait. And something I have found uh, or we have found, is that if it's a round-bodied bait, a two-toned color is key. If it's a flat-sided bait, that's not as important because a flat-sided bait, as it's rolling, you can see the motion. But a round bait, you don't see anything except the, the jig moving back and forth, right? That's all you see. But if it's two-toned color, the action is plain as day. You can see it from a mile away. So those two tone colors, like that guy there, a ghost minnow, an electric shad, a sexy shad, one of those colors with a distinct color line on it is the deal. We're taking this quarter ounce guppy head, firing it out. Now you've got mid strolling and bottom strolling are the two things that are sweeping tournament fishing. Mm -hmm. They're the two things that we are using most often. And the reason why is you can use heavier heads and you can cover a lot of water. So with a quarter ounce head, we're able to fan cast this thing up on flats. We're able to go into a creek and just go right down the bank and just take it apart very, very quickly. You go to a 196. Yeah, it's you're waiting. You're waiting. You're not covering a lot of water. So this is allowing us to be very effective using it to locate fish and catch fish. So I would say that is number one, hands down, in the smaller sizes. Uh, the Yamamoto Scope Shad is another major player. The only thing with the Scope Shad is I would use a one aught guppy head instead of the three aught. Another major player, Z-Man. The scented jerk shads, that three and a half jerk shads. I mean, it it did win the classic last year. There's a lot to be said for that. Yep. Uh, Gussie was moping with that thing, and you know, a year or two, two years ago, he did that same lake, and everybody was like, "What is that guy doing?" And now you look at every bass boat. Somebody's doing some version of this style of fishing. Uh, it pays to be ahead of those trends. Clearly. Yep. Last one. And then we'll talk about a few different heads, but the last bait is this BR fish. This is an interesting bait. Duo Realis put out the BR fish. Very simple plastic. Little flat tail, uh, shaped on one side, flat on the other side. And then they have a unique head for it. They have their BR head, and the head has two little fins, fins on yeah. the head. So... The guppy head, let's talk heads real quick. Yep. The guppy head, the VMC hybrid head, which is this guy here, and then the owner range roller are your primary heads for this style of fishing. Uh, the range roller has incredible crossover because you can use it in the heavier weights, covering water, 
but you can also go to super lightweights like Tim is talking about. They make it from like a, don't quote me, I think it Fair. goes from a 3 8 to a 196. Am I right? Yep. yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. I use the heavier, like 3 16 and a quarter the most, but you can go all the way down to the lighter. Uh, but one thing that you can do with this head, the lead wraps up the front of the hook point. Do I have one out? I got one right You've here. got one. The lead wraps right up the face of this thing. When we're covering water, letting it sink, and then working it mid-column, we haven't really even gotten to how to work this thing. We we'll do that, when, we'll do that, that when we talk about yes. rods. When it's out there, it doesn't matter. But when you start getting near the boat or under the boat, like if you spot a fish on your original 2D sonar straight down, it's very important that your line tie be vertical or just behind vertical. Otherwise, this thing will be sitting in the water like this <laughs> and you're shaking it and it's just going like this. Just You need this thing flat in the water. You want this action. You don't want this action. It just doesn't work. You need that thing rocking. So this head, they wrapped the lead where it can't sit this way. It has to sit flat, and that is huge. Okay, back to that BR head. The BR head with those fins on it. All these other baits, all these other heads, we're talking about this action coming through the water. This one, we are talking about this action coming through the water. This thing is dancing, walking the dog, darting, and moving. For me, for us, it was not a huge player through the, the core of winter because it was too cold. Like that's yeah. too much action. Need active fish. Going into spring, look out. That BR fish, rig that flat side, work that thing. So it's not the tiny shake, it's popping it. And it's all over the place. Again, there are new products coming out specifically for this category of fishing. And the category is constantly evolving and changing. It's amazing. You want to talk about the bigger ones? I yeah. gotta catch my breath. Yeah, we can talk Ooh. about the bigger ones. So same type of thing, you know, so Matt just kind of, he, he talked about the importance of the head, the importance of the action. You know, that range roller, having not only having that weight wrap all the way up onto the line tie, it also makes that that head unstable. It, it, it makes yes. it easier for that bait to rock side to side to side. Uh, now with these flat sided ones, we got the Sakamata Shad. That's an awesome. Uh, That's what kicked off the main strolling. Yeah, it did. Uh, the, the freeloader, this is the Crush City. Rapala's new uh, flat sided bait. This is a good chatterbait trailer as well as far as you know, same as the spunk shad But these are bigger ones you use the bigger heads same thing We're gonna talk about how to actually work these things in a second But uh, you know Matt kind of talked about the downsized version, you know the the spunk shad and the uh, the scope shad But same thing if you're on a fishery that has large, you know uh, thread fin shad or bigger bait fish you can do this same technique with heavier heads, you know, Absolutely. quarter ounce, three eighths ounce, depending on the depth. You know, a lot of these guys are fishing this down close to bottom. So it doesn't have to be up in mid column, mid strolling, it can be bottom strolling. Matt talked about that a little bit. Uh, but again, again, the same thing as those little heads, that Sakamata shad, the free, the freeloader, the bigger uh, spunk shad, those are all great baits if you're fishing around bigger bait fish. There's that bigger profile. Again, you just want that thing rocking. That's got the flat sides to it, unlike the other two. The other two are kind of rounded. Again, like Matt said, having that flat side, it really shows that side to side action. And again, not like a, a swim bait where you're getting that, that kind of roll, that little shimmy with that big tail kip. You're literally getting a side to side to side to side roll. It's a completely different action. All right, let's talk rods. You want okay. to talk about uh, two of our favorites while kind of explaining what you're doing? Sure. Yeah. So this is from this is a high end combo. Okay. It is a Daiwa Stees paired to a Sertate, and this is specifically the utility player, which I think is like a seven one. Let me see what it actually is for you. Seven one medium fast. 
This utility player I have done damage with. So my larger baits, uh, particularly last summer, I was going all the way up to a 3.8. So the way we fish this, you take that bait, you fire it out there, let it start to sink. If you're in shallow water, start right away. If it's deep water, you can let it go all the way to bottom. Or if you think your bass are suspended, just let it go part way. But then after that, you've just, you've got your real speed, just like you would be slow rolling a Kitek or any other swim bait with a bait caster, right? Just slow rolling, but then we're shaking at the same time. That's all there is to it. And you notice it's all spinning rods. The reason why is if you want to shake with a bait caster, the shake is an arm movement. Now it looks like an arm movement here because my arm's up. I'm trying to get over the side of the boat. But if I'm it's really all, doing all this, wrist, yeah. it's all wrist. Just a little tiny nothing wrist movement. So this particular technique, bait finesse, which we're talking about tomorrow, has so much momentum. I swear this is like saving spinning rods. Because all of a sudden, spinning rods are the deal again. Right. They are fantastic for this because it's just so much easier to work with your wrist. But it's just a steady reel while you shake. And this has worked really well for me. Again, I was using it last summer in particular, throwing three eighths down to a quarter uh, and fishing even bigger, heavier wire hooks. Summer bass pull a lot harder in warm water and I could really lean on those fish. And it worked really well, even like ledge fishing, right? deeper water fishing, in current, this technique truly shines. One of our other favorite baits, now let me, our uh, rods for this bait, this technique, um, is the X-Pride, specifically the 6.8 medium. Now with that said, this is a technique where you typically want a little bit shorter of a rod, because with all that wrist action comes a lot of work on your wrist. A lot wrist, of fatigue. A, a lot of fatigue. And this is one of those techniques, we always tell you guys on, on these buyer's guides and our other videos, don't break the budget, right? Don't, like don't buy something you can't afford. This is a technique that you're gonna be doing a lot of movement if you can afford it, get yourself a little bit lighter of a rod because yeah. doing this all day will- Lighter weight, not lighter action, lighter yeah, weight. Lighter Physically weight. Physically easier to use. Right, uh, and then a shorter rod. So this is a six foot eight. Again, it's a lot easier to sit there and shake and reel this bait as it's coming through the water column with a six foot eight uh, rod versus like a seven foot six or a seven foot four, a lot less yep. rod to be moving. So that X-Pride six, uh, six eight is an awesome uh, mid strolling rod. And then a little bit, uh, a little bit cheaper, more of a budget-friendly combo is the SLX. This is specific model. This is the seven-foot medium light. You and I were talking about this a little bit ago. You know, we have the medium action in the X Pride. In the SLX line, it's the medium light. It just it's just loads gonna, it's up just, better. It just works a little better in the medium light in that particular rod. It does. But one thing I want to add before we wrap this one up is we again we talked about a lot of things here. The main things that we're using, using that spunk shad, using a guppy head, using the range roller, using some of your bigger profiles, especially as we head towards summer. That BR fish as water's warming up, major deal. But my core of the strolling, not, not this stuff, the strolling right around that quarter ounce has been my sweet spot because you can fish very effectively, but you can also cover a lot of water. You need to cover water in the springtime to locate fish. But one, I'm just gonna make a prediction. Bass will get used to this, period. They get used to everything, right? A Senko still works, but it doesn't work the way it worked the first time a guy threw that thing in the water. Or a chatter. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Anything like that, it's going to diminish. People will continue to adapt. I'm telling you right now, as it gets tougher, and I'm talking two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, because this isn't going away. This is a part of bass fishing now. I think the lighter weights, getting down, it'll be an eighth, then it'll be a 16th, then it'll be a 32nd. Yeah. The bait working while barely moving. Moving, right will in the future will be the deal. You don't need to jump the gun now. Quarter ounce and send it because they will swim over and smoke that thing. But the day will come where lighter and slower will be the ticket. 
yeah, just having that that little dumb bait fish sitting there flickering above their head, not covering a lot of distance, you know, to the boat or to the kayak or to the shore, but yep. just sitting there basically we're back to this thing again, right? I, that's just, exactly right. Just it's going to come full circle. Full circle. So, guys, uh, we appreciate the support. Uh, thank you for watching. We know that this is a lot. This is kind of two big categories. Uh, like every video, we'll link all of this stuff down below in the yep. video description. Our favorite hooks, our favorite baits, our favorite colors. Uh, but again, this buyer's guide series, one of the most requested series we do all year. And uh, it's springtime. It's bass fishing time. And hopefully this will get you pointed in the right direction and save you uh, a few pennies along the way because yep. there are a lot of baits and a lot of heads out on the market it's crazy how big this category has gotten just in a few short years yeah like look at and I this just, is the stuff we have a ton of confidence right. in not the stuff we culled out right it's it's crazy so uh but again as always guys thank you for the support if you like this video hit that like button and remember to subscribe to the channel uh, we appreciate you guys and we will see you guys tomorrow, tomorrow for the next video in this series